So this morning I need to mail off a print, and the way I do that is I take an envelope like this, and I take the print and put the print in, this, in between two pieces of cardboard, thick cardboard, so it doesn't bend in the mail. But I don't know where to get pre-cut cardboard, so I cut it myself right now. Booyah. Print is done. You know your post office is good when you got some killer art on the wall. The prints have been mailed. Originally I was driving like 15 minutes to a place to mail all my prints, but luckily this one with this cool wall is a lot closer than 15 minutes and I got a sweet picture out of it. Another day, another 100 subscribers lost. Not even kidding. Nothing better than some moody lighting. So for my film class, the last movie in the class we're watching, and I just, I did the zoom thing again. I just read a comment that said someone likes the zooms, but then a lot of you were saying you don't like the zooms. So I'm gonna try to stop them for right now, but they might come back in the future. So for my film class, we have one more movie to watch, and that movie is Birdman. Believe it or not, I have seen lots of movies in my life while I'm a film student, so you should believe that, but I've never seen Birdman. I know two things about the movie Birdman. One, it's edited in a way where it's, it's made to look like one sequential shot or scene. The second thing I know is that Glenn and Spencer love this movie, but I never saw it just to spite them and now I have to watch it for school so I can get a good grade and pass my class. I wonder if I put this lens on that camera right now if it would look even more moody. Let me try, hold on. So obviously it's a much tighter shot, but I do think it looks a little more moody or a little moodier. I'm a film student, not an English student, forgive me. And the only reason I'm filming right now is because I love moody lighting. So as expressed in the previous video, I'm going to New York this Saturday and I want to hit different points in the city to take photos that I haven't gone to in the past. I felt like I should have said another word after that because the way my tone was, but there's no word that should have come after that. I confuse myself sometimes, but I want to go see things I haven't seen in the f Why would I say future? I'm going to try over. I'm going to start over. Oh my gosh. So, I'm going to New York this Saturday. My fiance and I are going out for the Shorty Awards. We are going to the Empire State Building, but other than that, zero plans for sightseeing. I do have some things I want to go see. I want to go see Brooklyn, different parts of Brooklyn, mainly the Dumbo area. Last time I was in New York, the Oculus building, train station, whatever the Oculus is, it wasn't finished yet and it wasn't open, so I want to go and see that and take pictures in there because it's nice and bright and pretty. And I also want to go see the Flatiron building because I've been to New York three times now and I have not seen that building yet even though it's so iconic. Other than that, I have no idea at this moment of what to go see. I want to hit up a good coffee shop. You live in the city, you live near the city, you've been to the city a lot. Leave suggestions down below because I want to see as much as possible in the short amount of time that we have. If you don't know, New York City is one of my favorite cities in the world. And while I'm there, I just want to do as much as possible. So dazzle me. Also, the light is way moodier closer up to the, to the, the window right here. <sighs> Got the mail. No idea what it's going to be because it's from Illinois. I, I don't live in Illinois. Oh, okay. I was confused because it was from a jewelry company, and I'm like, what jewelry did I buy? Hillary's wedding ring. It's information about the wedding ring. Okay, that makes sense because I did buy it in Illinois. Cool. Whoa, that was supposed to be a cool transition. Okay, try again. I have to watch Birdman now. I have to watch Birdman now, but I need to get dinner. 
So I'm gonna grab food because I failed to go grocery shopping today because I spent that time apartment hunting. I'm too busy all the time. Let's get food and watch a movie. Okay. Oh, I wasn't even recording the whole time. We gotta do that whole thing over again. No. Yeah, come on. That no. was so funny. I'm not funny. Wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're cute. You got good names on your phone? <laughs> Turn the ISO down. Is that too dark? Sure, we'll go with this one. It is now Tuesday. This video started on a Monday. I just didn't do anything in the past 24 hours that has been exciting or film worthy. But what I did do is I did go to Chipotle for dinner. So I am going to New York this weekend. I think I've said that like at least 10 times over the past couple videos. While I'm out in New York, I really want to do more photography stuff than anything just because I've been really, really interested and passionate about that recently. And the ideas and the visions I have for the photos I want to take while I'm on this trip are more wide angle shots. Obviously not like, oh that's 18, Obvi oh nope that's 10. Obviously not like this wide, I don't want this. I essentially want it like this, 16 millimeters on an APS-C body. 16 millimeters on an APS-C body is 25.6 millimeters on a full frame. No. Yeah, yeah, 20, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, so, yeah, that makes sense. So let me do a little camera lesson, kind of for myself, but also for the people who know nothing about cameras that watch my videos. So when I go and do photos or video work, I use three primary lenses. I use a Canon 70 to 200, which I'm borrowing from a friend, but he's still letting me borrow it, and I've gotten some good use out of this really, really old lens. This is this is a Canon EF 70 to 200 millimeter L F. It's a constant f4 aperture, so when you zoom in, it's not getting darker, it's not getting brighter, it's staying the same. And it's an L-series lens, so this glass, it's got the red ring, it is pretty amazing. And then, the lens that pretty much lives on my camera besides my Canon 10-18, to which films all my videos, I only use it for video, never for photos, is my 24 to 105 f4 L lens. Like the 70 to 200, it has the red ring. It's Canon's professional line, but it is their entry level professional lens. This is the kit lens for most of their full frame cameras. But that being said, it's a phenomenal lens. The last lens I use mainly when I'm filming weddings because it has image stabilization and is a prime lens is the Tamron SP 35 millimeter 1.8. DIVC USD and all those letters essentially just means that it's image stabilized. Now what's nice about this lens as opposed to these other two lenses is this is an f4, this is an f4, this is an f1.8. Let me show you what that difference is. Obviously it's a little more zoomed in because this is the widest this lens can go because it starts at 24 millimeters as opposed to 10 millimeters on my Canon 10 to 18. Um, but anyway, this is what f looks like in pretty good exposure I think so f4 you're obviously not gonna get everything in the background super blurry like obviously the stuff up on this shelf and the computer screen back there are blurry but look at the difference let me put this to 35 millimeters this is 35 millimeters so obviously the stuff is blurry but check this out this is the Tamron 35 1.8 so much creamier of bokeh in the background, so much more blurry. I changed the settings a bit so that the exposure could be the same, but the f-stop is now at 1.8 instead of f4. So if you were ever wondering why I had just a straight up 35 prime instead of one that has 35 on it on the lens already, there, it's already got 35 on there, is for this reason alone. When I'm shooting weddings and stuff, you need this. This is what people love to see in their wedding videos and a lot of product shots too. So now with that little lens lesson out of the way, the reason I'm telling you all this is because I think I'm going to rent a 16 to 35 lens for the trip and here's why. I love photography that is wide. I have come to that conclusion. Like I absolutely love using the 70 to 200 for specialized stuff. It's been fun to play around with but using this lens and borrowing it from my friend I've realized that this is not a lens I need. This lens is great for specific stuff, like wedding shots or close-up shots or macro shots, but it's not great for everyday use on a crop-sensored camera. This lens is awesome 
it does such a great job, but I never use anything past 35 to 45 millimeters. I never use 50 to 105. If I do, or if I know I'm gonna use those focal lengths, I'm just gonna throw on the 70 to 200 and get a much cleaner image because that's what it does best. So by renting a 16 to 35, I'm going to have, what, eight more millimeters to work with, and it's an f2.8. I just absolutely love wide photography, and I want to try that lens out. And I'm not really gonna have a better opportunity than this weekend to do that because I'm going to New York.